Guitars are the most widely played instrument in the world. And where do you think the finest guitars in the world are made? That's right, you guessed it, in Virginia. Huss and Dalton Guitars, revered the world over for great sound and unsurpassed beautiful craftsmanship, these fine instruments are made right in the heart of Virginia's Shenandoah Valley. So sit back, listen to perfection, and see what goes into building the world's finest steel string flat top guitar right here on Made in Virginia. But first, this. Made in Virginia is brought to you by At Union Bank and Trust, we salute the dreamers, the thinkers, the doers, the believers, the builders, and the makers. Thanks to your vision, hard work, and innovation, you make Virginia shine. Union Bank and Trust, a partner of Virginia business and a proud supporter of Made in Virginia and Virginia Public Broadcasting. Jeff Huss and Mark Dalton, both accomplished musicians, first shared a dream and now live the reality of building the world's finest guitars. When I was growing up, I grew up in the country, um, and we, we didn't have a lot to do. Music was huge for us, so it was a good, it was, it was always a positive thing to do. Uh, I met Mark, uh, I was working at a banjo company over uh, about 45 minutes over the mountain. And uh, we used to have jam sessions on Friday afternoons there and local musicians would come and we'd play music together. And he was uh, one of the guys that started coming and he was a real good banjo player and good guitar player and he started coming jamming. And we just hit it off musically and got to be friends. And so then when I decided to leave Stelling, he went to work there, kind of took my spot there and I'd started building guitars while I was at that company for them and then when I left to build my own guitars and I was looking for somebody to come in and partner with me I wanted I needed help but I didn't want an employee I wanted somebody as committed to it as I was and so I wanted a partner and so he came up he was the first choice I had in my mind that would make a good partner he had skills that I didn't have and I thought we complemented each other well personally we started in 95 so we were in uh the shop at Jeff's house for about a year and we were in a rented space in Stewart's Draft for uh, <clears throat> for three years and then we bought this building and then we bought the building next door in 2008 and moved part of the operation into that. Well, we just did what we do and, and hoped for the best and, and we were building guitars and we'd take them around to music stores at first and show them to people and they'd say wow that's a nice guitar and yeah I'll try it I'll see if I can sell it and, and we developed a dealer network doing that and uh, it just grew from there until we started going to trade shows we got big enough to go to the big trade shows and the first time we went to called the NAM show uh, in Nashville where all of the dealers from around the country come there to buy their products and we uh, that was sort of our coming out party and we did real well there and signed up a lot of the major dealers around the country and, and uh, that really got our name out there for me, it's become a routine of building guitars, and I love that. I love routine. I love knowing exactly what I'm going to do and how I'm going to do it, and I can do it, you know, as close to perfect every time. So it's more of a, it's more of the construction end of it for me now than it is the musical instrument part of it. The hearing, we have that down. We have our formula, and we know if we build them the way that we're supposed to build them, that they're going to sound the way we want them to sound. Constructing a guitar begins with the wood. Well, not exactly. First comes the design, and the Huss and Dalton catalog offers over 20 models born from a heritage of legendary guitar styles. 
the, the shape makes a big difference in, in the placement of the bridge. Um, the, the larger guitars like Dreadnoughts, there's more space around the bridge. The wider the, the waist is, it sort of opens the tone up, it tends to make a, a little more volume, but not necessarily. A, a small guitar can, can be really loud. Um, but everything you do shape-wise, depth of the body also makes a difference. Um, we do some models we'll do in two different depths. We're kind of traditionalist kind of guys, and like I said, we're, we're not looking to reinvent the guitar. We do try all kinds of new woods and, and new processes with the woods. Um, the, the one wood that we use quite a bit is called sinker mahogany, which is reclaimed logs from rivers in Belize. So it's old growth mahogany that's been reclaimed. Um, when we first heard about it, we thought, well, it's, you know, it's not going to make any difference, but let's try it. And we tried it, and it sounds different than the normal mahogany wood. Uh, another one is a thing called torrified spruce that they're doing, where they bake the spruce that we use for the tops, and it, it bakes all the sugars and resins out, out of the cell walls and leaves the piece of wood as it would be if it was a 50 or 60 year old piece of wood that had aged naturally. And the same thing when we first heard about it, we thought, well, this is another you know, jar of snake oil they're trying to sell us, but we tried it and it turned out to, to it does make a difference and it's, it makes a great sounding guitar and we use quite a bit of that wood now. In 2008, uh, the people at Monticello cut down the Northwest poplar tree, which had been planted by Jefferson in 1807. And they parsed out the wood to different artisans and we were able to get a hold of some of that wood and working in conjunction with the uh, Jefferson Foundation, we built uh, six guitars from that and sold those um, back in 2010 and through 12. Uh, it was a pretty special project given the connection to Thomas Jefferson. Once a style and design has been established and wood choice is determined, the process begins right at the top with the soundboard, made usually from premium spruce. I always feel like, you know, 80% at least of the sound of guitars coming out of the top, the way the top is constructed, what kind of wood is used, how thick it is, how stiff it is, how it's braced. That's really the, the soundboard. It's called the soundboard, and that's where most of the sound comes from. The back and sides can sort of color that tone one way or the other, but most of the sound is coming out of the top of the guitar. First, the two matching top pieces are checked on the light table for any imperfections. Next, the two top pieces are glued together. This is done on a flatbed table. Once dry, the soundboard, or top's profile, is cut. The shaped top is then deflection tested for strength and flexibility. This is the first step in achieving that great H&D sound, as well as making sure these guitars are as durable as they are beautiful. The tops are then sent to the CNC machine where sound holes are cut out and a groove is cut around the sound hole for the hand inlaid rosette. The biggest thing is when, you, when you're trying to build a perfect guitar, which not, not that our guitars are perfect, but they're as close as we can possibly get them, it helps to start with parts that are perfect. Um, you, you can tweak bad parts into a good guitar, but it takes a lot of work and time and a lot of them get tossed. In the years before we had the CNC, we've had the CNC for 13 years now, I think. And in the years before that, everything was made in here on a jig, on a shaper, router table, that kind of thing. Uh, and we made part, we made great guitars out of them, but we did a lot of handwork to try to make parts that were imperfect into a perfect guitar. Um, we would waste wood often because it had air built into them and sometimes you'd have to toss something the, the, the machine will make perfect parts every time as long as this the part stays put on the bed it's it works four places behind the decimal point so it's not going to make uh, a part that's incorrect um, it doesn't save a lot of time people think it saves a lot of time I mean a lot of people say you have a CNC they think you shove some wood in this side and go around to the other side with the case and hold it and the guitar drops into it. It, it doesn't work that way. It, it does not take a lot, a lot, a lot of labor out of guitar building because there's always be tons of sanding and tons of labor in guitar building. 
but when you start off with really, really good parts, it, it makes it easier to do. Back from milling with the sound hole cut, the top is then fit with X-bracing. Made from super strong red spruce, the X-bracing is secured to the top's inside surface. Bracing is essential for strength, as tension from the steel guitar strings is between 170 and 180 pounds. Finger braces are added. Next comes the back. Like the top, the back is made from two matching pieces of wood. The pieces are glued together, but this time with an inlaid zipper strip joining the two halves. Bracing the back is accomplished with ladder bracing. Hand cuts are made to assure a perfect fit for quality sound and durability. Next come the sides. Once milled to perfection, the two side pieces are clamped into a bending jig where heat and steam are applied. Once the side bending is completed, the side pieces are cut to length, sanded, and joined in a body mold and clamped into place. The fit is coming together. The pieces are now starting to take the shape of a guitar. A curved lining or brace is made and notched to accept joining the top and back. At this point, we have about half a guitar body. The sides are then placed into the building mold. Note the precise fit. The top of the curved lining and the sides are sanded and made ready for joining the top and back of the guitar. Notches are measured and cut into the curved lining. The back is attached first. A trial fit assures precision. The back is then glued and clamped into place. Once dried and before the top is joined to the guitar body, it is carefully checked. For this model, the sides of the guitar body are then sanded to a 25-foot radius. The top, or soundboard, is ready to be attached. Matching cuts are made to both the side and top bracings. This assures a perfect fit. The fit is checked and rechecked. Once flawless, the guitar top is joined, glued, and clamped to the sides. Once dried, the back and top are routed with a groove to accommodate the bindings and sanded for a flawless fit of the bindings. The binding acts, it serves two functions. It's, it's structural in that it protects that joint. When you're gluing that joint together, you've got the exposed joint line. And if you route that channel and glue that binding in there, you're adding some strength to that joint because you've added another glue joint to the, to the whole thing. And that's also a decorative thing traditionally then because you're doing that while we're doing it, why not make it something pretty so you can use a you know, pretty piece of wood. Or in the old days, they used to use ivory in those joints or tortoise shell, genuine tortoise shell. Nowadays, of course, you don't use those things. You use a plastic that looks like tortoise shell. Or we do a lot of wood binding, so we'll do f you know, flamed maple or flamed koa bindings or something that complement the color of the back and the sides and try to create a, an attractive package. An end graft is inlaid at the bottom of the guitar, joining the sides, and a hole is drilled for the strap button. Before the guitar body is bound, final hand cuts are made, and as always, more sanding to prepare the body for the binding inlay. The binding inlay is actually made of numerous pieces of material, rosewood, maple, ivoroid, or other custom ordered binding materials are used. The binding is attached by hand with glue and secured in place with tape. Once dried, the sides and the inlaid binding edges are hand cut to final shape with a scraper and as always, sanded to perfection. Although it is not an instrument yet, the guitar body is essentially completed and ready for the neck assembly. Let's see how the neck assembly is made. An acoustic guitar with a medium gauge set of strings on it has about 180 pounds of pressure strung up to, to standard pitch. So it takes a lot um, structurally to hold that. And, that, and th th there are three components to that, the neck and bridge, and then the top, and the top bracing. That's where all of that is held together. So yeah, it's very critical. Premium mahogany is chosen for the neck, and a neck blank is made. The neck blank then goes to the milling machine for the peg head to be shaped. The Huss and Dalton logo shape is also routed into the peg head 
and the mother of pearl logo inlay is cut. The fingerboard, usually made from ebony, is also shaped on the milling machine. The neck is then sent back to the wood shop, where the truss rod is inserted. Holes are drilled for the bolts, which will eventually hold the neck in place. The neck is then checked to assure the angles and fit is flawless. The fingerboard is positioned and epoxied into place. The neck is then sent back to the milling machine for its preliminary shaping. The neck then returns to the wood shop for a fitting, final shaping, and sanding. And the fret markers are laid out, drilled, and inlaid. The H&D logo is inlaid into the peghead. The neck and peghead assembly is then sanded and prepared for the finishing process. We use uh, Honduran rosewood for the bridge plate. Um, the bridge plate is on the inside of the top, and it's where the strings, uh, an acoustic guitar string has a ball on the end of it, and it goes through a hole, and the pin pulls it up against this bridge plate. Um, <clears throat> it has two functions. One is to keep that bridge, that string ball from pulling through the top and eating into the top, and the other one, the other function is to spread the vibration into the top. Honduran rosewood is extremely dense and heavy. Uh, it's what marimba keys are made out of, if you know what a marimba is. And it's very musical. It has a huge amount of tap tone. And so it spreads that vibration into the top rather than being a damper, it's a, you know, it's a magnifier. Before the finishing process begins, the body and the neck assembly are sanded and masked. A filler compound is applied to all surfaces of the body and hand rubbed. Next, the guitar is sprayed with a wash coat sealer, and then over the course of three to four days, a minimum of nine coats of catalyzed urethane are applied and sanded with an oscillating sander and by hand. The guitar is then wet sanded by hand, starting with an 800 grit paper and finishing with a 2500 grit paper. The guitar body is then buffed on a soft cloth wheel with a polishing compound, which brings out the fine detail in the finish. Next, the guitar goes in for final assembly. The neck and bridge are set precisely, glued and clamped into place. The nearly finished guitar is then ready for fretting and installing the nut. The frets are made from nickel alloy. They are hand cut and epoxied into place. Once dried, the frets are hand milled and polished. The nut is installed. The bridge is drilled and ramped to accommodate the bridge pins and strings. Precise grooves for the strings are cut into the nut and filed to perfection. Once the tuners are in place, the guitar is ready for setup. The pick guard is applied with adhesive. The fingerboard is oiled. Strings are attached string height is checked in the playing position. The truss rod is checked and adjusted. The string height or action is also adjusted and set at the nut and saddle. The action is checked and the guitar is tuned. And now you have a world-class Huss and Dalton guitar made in Virginia. I don't know if we've ever built a perfect guitar but we we come awfully close, and we, we try to every single time out. And our, uh, like I said, I mentioned some of our competitors. We're, we're in a really competitive field right now where there's a lot of really good people doing what we do. Um, we're not the only ones. They, they're out there, and they're doing some really clean, super work. And, and if you want to sell yours beside theirs, it, yours better be too. I mean, we have to be perfectionists because the competition is very stiff out there. There's really, really great guitars being made. And to compete, you have to make a really great guitar to hand in the store next to somebody else, some other brand. I'm from Virginia. I've, been, I've lived in Virginia my entire life. Now, I'm not from this part of the state. I'm from downstate a ways. Um, the reason it ended up here was because Jeff and I worked at Stelling Banjo over in the Rockfish Valley. Uh, he came here from North Dakota um, after the, uh, he decided he didn't want to be a lawyer, went to work at Stelling. I came up from home and worked at Stelling, uh, and we started in Duluthry there. 
And so um, when we decided to start this business, we started in, in uh, a shop at Jeff's house and that, that's how it ended up in Stanton because that's in Stanton. Um, there's a lot of music around here too, so it, uh, in proximity to D.C., we sell a lot of guitars in Northern Virginia and D.C. area, um, so it's, it's a really good place to, uh, to build it, and um, <clears throat> people have a lot of connection to music here. Well, I think uh, in all the state, because I'm from down in the Piedmont, so we would say that our side of the Blue Ridge is the real music side, but up here they, they play some too, yeah. The musical heritage. I grew up in North Dakota. Uh, I moved to Virginia because I was in law school. I knew I didn't want to be a lawyer, and I wanted to go somewhere where the music that I was passionate about was, and that was the Mid-Atlantic, you know, the Appalachian area of bluegrass music and old-time music and southern music. And so that's why I moved here um, to be around that music, thinking maybe I could make a career somehow involving the music, and it ended up being this. Oh, it's beautiful. It's Virginia. It's, it's one of the most beautiful places in the world. We've traveled quite a bit in the last few years, and uh, we took a trip down to Louisiana. We're out in California. Uh, but when we come home, it's like, wow, you know, you don't have to go very far from here to, to be in the most beautiful place in the world. You're in Virginia. The town has changed a lot. The, the downtown area has been revitalized so beautifully, and it, you know, it's just a beautiful little town now, and it's, now it's become a, you know, a real tourist attraction. You know people from Northern Virginia and whatnot to come down for the weekend and it's just turned into a great little town. It's, to me it's a perfect size and a lot of people might think it's too small uh, if you came here from a big city if you're a big city person. But it has th things going on, you know, there's some really neat stuff um, like American Shakespeare and the Frontier Museum and things like that that attract people from the outside. It's, it's a perfect small town atmosphere. A lot of music, always music going on. Um, and you can't say that about a lot of places. A lot, of, a lot bigger places than Stanton don't have that stuff going on, you know. So um, it's, it's great. The city's been fine to work with here. We've, been, we've always had a good relationship with the city. Um, it took them years to even know that we were here because we keep kind of a low profile, you know, that we don't, since we don't retail guitars out of here, a lot of people don't know that we're here, but, um, it, you know, it, it, it's hard to find anything wrong with Stanton. The, the beauty of the place it, it, it by itself is, is, is kind of hard to beat. And it, we, we didn't ever have any aspirations to become a you know, big corporation or anything. We just wanted to make guitars, you know. And uh, we love it here. And, you know, my home is here now, and Mark's home has been here his whole life. And, and the, you know, we're not going to take it anywhere else. The thing that gives me the most pride, I guess, is when I hear a really good musician making music on a guitar we made. And, and they're not thinking about the guitar. They're not thinking about how it feels or anything. They're, they're just lost in their music. And it's coming out of a guitar that we made and out of their hands. And I, I get the most pride out of that, the most fulfillment. Mary Chapin Carpenter's got uh, two or three of our guitars. Um, Stone Gossard from Pearl Jam went into a shop in Seattle and bought one years ago and just played it on several of their albums. Uh, Albert Lee, who is a real guitar player's guitar player, played with Eric Clapton and Emmy Lou Harris's hot band. Uh, we've actually, we're doing a signature model with him. Paul Simon was playing at the Lincoln Center in Washington, D.C. one time, and our dealer in Washington was asked to bring several guitars over for him to try. And he brought over 15 or 20 guitars, and they set them up, and he played all three of them, and, and he ended up buying one of ours. The Dreadnought guitar got its name from A, an African gourd, B, an 1830s French shoe style, C, a British battleship, or D, a Spanish sword. The answer right after this. Made in Virginia is brought to you by at Union Bank and Trust. We salute the dreamers, the thinkers, the doers, the believers, the builders, and the makers. Thanks to your vision, hard work, and innovation, you make Virginia shine. Union Bank and Trust, 
a partner of Virginia Business and a proud supporter of Made in Virginia and Virginia Public Broadcasting. The Dreadnought Guitar is named after a British battleship, the HMS Dreadnought. Next week on Made in Virginia, we're going to take you where few people get to go, the Port of Virginia, dockside right up to the ships for a bird's eye view of the loading and unloading of cargo. And then we'll go behind the scenes to learn all about the Virginia Corporation that creates the crane automation and control systems that handles with care, precision and safety the over 50 million tons of cargo annually that are imported and exported from the ports of Virginia. Technology and state-of-the-art material handling. It's all right here next time on Made in Virginia. If you would like to learn more about today's episode or suggest a Virginia manufacturer for the program, you may visit us at madeinvirginia.tv and at wvpt.net.